This is the video for ordering dynamic programming routine. Over here on the left is the beginning of the routine, and over here on the right is the end of the routine. It starts out by setting LG to 0. Then for IG of 2, down here the next IG 40, one at a time, it's going to go through all of the days. It didn't start at day one because that's already a given. Next it says for i of zero and down here we see next i to jg one at a time. This is going to be used as an index for no zero sub i. What it's referring to is these particular inventories. If you have an inventory of 1, 2, and 3, nothing is going to be ordered on that day. All of these values of inventory reflect the fact that nothing will be ordered on that day. Say we have one, one of the first part doesn't need to be ordered. We still have one. Two of that one, we don't have to order it. Four of that one, we don't have to order it. So this is a list of all of them, and JG is the highest all set for all these values in no zero. These values down here. So we're going to go through for each one of those, knowing that nothing's going to be ordered on that day. But yet there's bonuses associated with each one of these inventories. We have to bring them forward to the next day. How do we do that? Well, we know the next day one of each of them is going to be used. So we take our beginning value, put it in K, and we subtract 1, 1, 1 from it. For example, we start out with 2, 4, and 6. Well, the next day, we're going to subtract 1 from each of them, and it's going to be 1, 3, and 5. Well, they still none of them have, have changed to 0. None of them are going to be ordered. But they have to have their bonuses brought forward. Each one had associated with it a bonus. So here it says, take the bonus at the position J, and now move it to this new position, K. Also, there is a marker associated with each one of those inventories. Take that marker and bring it forward also. Then below that it says, then zero out the bonus and marker for the one that you just moved forward. Now we can do this because they're all moving lower. Eventually, we'll probably get to one that says it's going to move it into this position, J, because its K value will be equal to the J. Well, anyway, we can do this. We can move them to the left. So it goes through there, and it brings the bonuses forward for each of the inventories for the no zero ones, and that's this list down here. The next thing it does is it goes to BA and runs a routine that does it for the inventories that will have an order on this day. It's going to go to BA and it's going to return on B and it's going to come right back here. Now over here on the right is a list, well again a partial list, of the inventories that will have an order. Now it starts at 35, just because I want to show you it changes from zeros in the beginning to one in the beginning. But this first one would be 0, 5, 6, which means the first part has to be ordered. So this is a list of all the inventories where an order has to be made. So when it goes to this subroutine, it takes care of all the bonuses for orders being made. So this one updated those with no orders being made, but this subroutine updated the ones for when orders are being made. In that case, where they're being made, it's going to take the previous bonus and add to it the bonus for the order of that day. But you remember, we can order more than just one if we have empty space 
in our warehouse or shelf where we're storing this, we, we could order, I think, up to six of them. Yes, up to six of them. So it has, it, it makes bonus answers and checks to see which is the best bonus to be in a particular inventory the next day. All right, so that's what that does. Then we go around here for all 40 days. Well, from 2 to 40. Then we want to know where is the highest value for our bonuses. So we first we set the highest bonus to 0. Then we're going to go around a loop here from I to I to ZG one at a time. It's going to go around and check all the bonuses because that's where the values keep being brought forward to. And we're going to check to see which is the highest. So we first check for bonus at I against the highest bonus, which starts out at zero. So the first time it, it's not less than or equal, so it won't go to CE. It'll come down here and say the highest bonus is bonus of I. And where we found it, it's index PG, it's in marker number at that i position. We remember, we're always remembering where it came from. So we say its marker number is PG. So when we find the one that's the highest value, we also know what its index was. And now we go over to the other side here now. First, it fills the 40 values of answer quantity with zero. So it's going to use that to know if there's anything ordered on any one of the 40 days, and it's going to say, well, we're starting out, we're going to make them all zero. Then we're going to set V equal to the marker value at PG. That's the best marker we found down here. And the marker value is going to tell us exactly what's to happen. The next line says set list 31 at offset LG to that value of PG and then add one to LG. Well, remember way back here at the beginning we set LG to zero. Here we're remembering every PG and putting it into this list 31. Well list 31 never got a name so I think the programmer just put that in here so he would have a list of all these offsets in marker value. So at the end he could go to this list 31 and see exactly the values of PG that were used. Next, it's going to set H equal to the V, which is the value it found there. And then it's going to divide H by 10,000. So it, it's pulling off the high value of theft by dividing it by 10,000. And then it mods V by 10,000 to reduce V so it then can only be from 0 to 9,999. And here we pulled off that beginning value and put it in H. That is going to be its reference or offset to the next marker value. In fact, we can see down here at the bottom, it sets PG to this value of H and then checks to see if it's greater than 1 well, if it's a marker value, it will be, and comes back here and goes around this loop again. It's going back through the days, starting at the highest bonus and wanting to know where that bonus came from. Well, after it gets the value of H off of there, we saw that it reduced V that down to just four digits. Then D here is going to stand for the day. It's going back to where it found the previous best bonus. So it needs to know the value of the day. Sets D to V and then divides it by 100. Well, there can be 40 days, so it needed two digits in this case. And then it says it subtracts 1 from D. I guess, I guess D was not base 0, so it put it to 0. Then it says... I'm going to mod it with 100, my V with 100, what's what left of it, and then there's only two digits left in V. And then it says, well, I'm going to put, set the answer part for that D, day, <laughs> to V, and then I'm going to divide it by 10. So the first of those digits is telling it what part 
was being ordered that day. And then the next thing, it mods the rest of V with 10, so it has only one digit left, and that it sets as the answer quantity for that day. Remember, the quantity order can only be 1 to 9, so it fits in one digit. Actually, it can only be 1 to 6. Because the other, the other two things have to be at least 1 and 2, I believe, yes. Okay, so anyway, so, so now we have everything known for that day, and we know in the value of H is the previous marker. And unless that value of H is not greater than 1, we have gone around again. And eventually we'll go home because the original value for the PG is going to be 0. Alright, this is the end of the program video for ordering dynamic programming routines.